All right, we're back again for another episode, Rabbit Season Podcast, man. And uh, we got some some of the big homies right here, some OGs that um, I, I've been a fan of their stuff for a long time. So this is cool for us. Uh, but man, I got the architects of G Funk right here in the building. Cocaine, Co 187 in the building. What's up? What's up? What's up? Bro? What up? Welcome back, brother. What's up with you, brother? Hey, man. Um, <laughs> you were just mentioning, um, you know, just just to start the conversation. Right. One of the last times we we saw you, it was right before, right man, before the bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah <laughs> that COVID, yeah. man. That, that crazy science yeah. science um, experiment, <laughs> experiment that we've been exposed to. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah, it's good to see you, man. Yeah, in fact, good to see everybody, Pat. And you like know, you were saying, it it's good to see people. You know, After back to work. Yeah, yeah, back to work. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, you know, during the whole time, we were we were still doing our thing as you guys were as well. Absolutely. Um, you know. Um, we're, we're going to talk about it, um, the new project, and we'll get into more of the stuff in, in a sec. And, and then I want to go back a little, if that's okay with you guys. That's but, what's up. Man, um, how, how did, it, um, did it come about where you guys finally – this is like one of them <laughs> projects that seems like long overdue, my brother. Right, right, like, right. <laughs> I mean, well, I found out some of the backstory, which we're going to get into, absolutely. man. Like, I didn't even know you guys were related when I first started buying your guys' music <laughs> back, way back in the day. But it seems like this project is like it should should have been done. Just man. a dream like, project. Yeah. It's a dream project for me and Cocaine. We always wanted to do it. You know, we cousins. Mm -hmm. You know, we all worked together our whole career. Uh -huh. But we never did a project as me and him doing a project with me and him. You know, we always um, produced um, and wrote and performed in Above the Law and produced um, all the Cocaine records, our Ruthless records. You know, and, and when he left and when we both left, we still produce records together and stuff like that uh -huh. but me and him always had a vision to do you know a cousin's record basically create our own thing but it's it, the dope thing about AOGF is that we were able to with in rest in peace Camp G shout out DJ Chaos Go Mac with the sack Layla with the clout mm -hmm. Dr. Dre and Easy e of course always you know we wanted to protect that legacy with doing a project together basically um, and still do it where we weren't stepping on the legacy as well, mm -hmm. you know, so it's great that we did ALGF because ALGF is a group itself. It's not a collaboration project. So it's a, it's a, it took us people, you know, the pandemic didn't make him do it because me and him was inside or whatever, because we did the record, what, five year run, six year right. run, right? right? You know what I mean? Through the songs, me and him, you know, um, working mm -hmm. on different projects and everything. That's how we were able to do the project because we always wanted to do a project with me and him actually in the studio doing it we didn't want to email each other like beats and him email vocals back to me the organic way like yeah, where, where organic everybody way. used to get yeah. in so that. it's a real it's a real group album it's a group concept it's, it's the concept of it is we're a funk soul hip-hop band so when you sonically hear it me and him did everything on it from top to bottom i composed it he, me and him along he did the writing um we performed everything ourselves, all the hooks, all the verses, everything, just like an old funk band or a new funk band, as we call ourselves, a new hip hop soul funk band, Architects of G Funk, and that's how we put it together. <coughs> it's been a journey, man, and I, we say it took us six years to do it, but really we've been waiting what thirty, some thirty, forty years to do it. That, that's what yeah, I'm that's saying because so. <laughs> I think I've been waiting right. that long. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Shouty's yeah. talking about doing records together. Exactly. We already come from a musical background, yeah, so yeah. it's like you know it, it was destiny. Well, you know, you know and, and that's that's something I did want to get to <clears> also because even. You know, when I first knew about you guys getting the projects and stuff, like what you were mentioning, you guys, you guys have been doing those things, uh, doing the harmonies, the hooks, the right. the the producing, you know, helping yeah. helping engineered in the studios. Like you right. guys been through the whole ride. But man, both both you guys, you know, uh, come from musical backgrounds with the right. family, and, and 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 that's pretty dope, man. And to keep it moving like that, and um, can can you speak on that a little bit, man? Because um, we'll go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah man. You, we'll talk about um, so well, we Uncle come, Jerry B. Long yeah. is it, one of the it, most incredible composers, um, and he can break that down mm -hmm. for you because some he's song a, he's his, his his oh uh, my god yeah his, his, <laughs> some of his songs impeccable. man is well, like ah oh, man well like, for those that didn't know um, you know we come from a musical background we call it music royalty yeah yeah uh, my father Jerry Buddy Long Senior I'm Junior he was a um, 
incredible arranger, writer, composer at Motown. Some of the most incredible records that people that fools low ride to, to this, this day. day. Yeah. <laughs> is my father was behind there. Such songs by The Temptation, Just My Imagination. Sure. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Smiling faces. Smiling faces by Undisputed Truth. Truth. A slew of hits over there in Motown. And then Uncle Willie Hutch, That's who right. was incredible. The uh, original soul, Big Hutch. So, yeah. Soul and yeah. punk artist, yeah. mm-hmm. and, you know, who was was definitely doing his thing at Motown. The Mac, the yeah. Jackson. He the wrote Jackson, I'll Be There, yeah. The Fifth Dimension, and yeah. his own career was yeah. a stellar career. And then my dad, which is R. Hutch, which is a writer and composer at Motown, mm-hmm. he wrote for The Miracles, The Jacksons, and The Commodores. <clears throat> so, yeah. yeah. So, 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 you know, some people... Um, how how do, how did they uh, how does the family um, mm-hmm. receive the fact that um, you guys ca- are carrying on that legacy? Because you because you know sometimes um, you know especially at the, the rest beginning. Rest in peace to all those guys too. Uh, you know to our to our to those are our true forefathers. Yeah, yeah. This, rest in peace. You know, rest man. in peace to all three of them. Respect, you know, man. because they are our forefathers of what we're doing. But yeah, the, well, the family. Well, I, I was gonna say um, because at, at the beginning of like uh, of you know the beginning stages of hip hop, mm-hmm. people were not counting it as an uh, like it was form an, uh, an actual yeah. form of music. Yeah, but here we right. are, what uh, almost fifty years later. Well, me and him growing up as writers, and uh-huh. composers, and musicians because we grew up studying music. Uh, yeah. You know, but when hip hop cracked off, it kind of hit us, and we wanted to do that. They thought we was crazy. That's what I'm saying. No, they <laughs> thought we was a loony because they had paid for all. They, you know, had they had. And and graced us and engulfed us with so much music, yeah. you know. What I mean, and we were talented as even young kids, but from a musical aspect, you know, from knowing how to play and read music, it was like, why y'all doing the hip hop stuff, yeah, like yeah. you know, like that? Because they thought we would enter into more of a music, you know, actually being in a band, doing it, structure music, that kind of thing. Hip hop took off so crazy when we were um, teenagers and young kids, we just gravitated to it, and we wanted to do our music that way. I think the bigger side to it, they always champion the fact that we wanted to do music our way because they yeah. were creative. Yeah, right. They just didn't want no parts of it. You know what I mean? It wasn't right. their thing. But they always champion my dad, his dad, my uncle. They always champion the way we did it. You yeah. know what I mean? Because they they're true musicians, and and true musicians always are like, you know, that's their vision of music. Yeah, that's the way they see music in their head. And and then. You know, I, I gotta think from their perspective. They they figured like exactly what you said is because yeah. you were you guys were doing it with your own music, now. right? Exactly. Like it, it wasn't yeah. off of something else. This is like now yeah. all the talent and all the stuff you learn now you're putting it into a new form of music called hip hop. Right. At the time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now hip hop's almost fifty in, man. We're yeah, it's still here. I, yeah, tell, man. I, mm-hmm. I was telling them when they were, you know when they were when it when I was buying cassettes and. You know, one of the parents, whatever house I was at that weekend, was, mm-hmm. was would take me to the spot, and and I would get my shit on cassettes, and, right. uh, and they would kind of joke cassettes. and like, oh uh, yeah, cassettes, and and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they would joke, you know, oh, it's just a fad, you know. It'll play out next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, you know, they, we are fifty years later. They, they tried to compare it to like disco or something, and and I, this and is I, true. Yeah, and, and nobody. That's funny you saying that though, yeah. fam, because if you look at if you look at that era, mm-hmm. people every I mean, I think every year they thought rap was gonna die. Yes. I mean, every year somebody <laughs> said rap is over. Every yeah. year somebody said rap is over, rap is over, till here we are right now, because they thought it would die. Like they thought that they could actually take the music in the streets, bulldoze it in, and it'll go away. But I think the kids gravitated to to, uh, to it so quickly, I think that's why they thought it was fatty. But I think the people who who were part of developing and designing hip hop, and and really putting real a real focus on creating it, that's why it lasts so long. Yeah. Like that's what when you look at how Easy E looked at the game when Easy E created Ruthless Records, he looked at the game from a broad perspective, and, and even like the Russell Simmons, like Coco will bring up, you know, Easy E's like the Russell Simmons of the West Coast. They both kind of looked at hip hop in a broad perspective. They didn't look at it in a fatty way. I think if the guys that were in Pushing the buttons in hip hop 
would have looked at it as a fad, it wouldn't have lasted. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm, I'm glad you just said that. I, but we're going to go all over the place because we're having some <laughs> good conversations here, man. I, I'm going to get to some stuff. But, man, uh, the, the fact that you said about Easy e mm -hmm. having a broader perspective, like I've had this conversation with a lot of cats, and, like, even at the time, he was bringing around, you know, brown homies, you know, like oh, myself. And, and, and that's a part the of me it. The Mexican oh, talent D from it, yeah. DJs, you know, Julio G, DJ Tony G. Yeah, Tony, um, yeah. You know what I mean? And and brown side, you know. Uh, yeah, what, what, Toker, Danger. Yeah, yeah man. Boys, rest in peace, yeah. man. But, mm -hmm. but um, Kid Frost. Yeah. Kid Frost. Mm -hmm. and, and he had... Um, Oh, and ALT and everybody. Yeah, ALT. I, I'm like going to keep yeah, going. Yeah, ALT, but, Saint, uh, all of them. Yeah, we can keep yeah. going. They're our family. But, so. but, but <laughs> the, the fact that you said that, he had a broader perspective. He yeah. saw, and, and at the time, even then <clears> and now, I mean, it, you know, maybe the media don't portray it that way, but Black right. and Brown's been doing business together. We've been oh, making moves and, and yeah, doing absolutely. things. But I mean, the, the, the brilliant thing about that, what you bring it, when you bring it up in that perspective, Easy e always felt like, okay, Everybody consumes our music, but they're really, they really support it, embrace it. So we have to do something. He had, that was a direct thing. That wasn't like a fad yeah. he was jumping on. That's something he was passionate about yeah. doing a Latino, a Chicano rap division at Ruthless Records. Mm -hmm. It just never really was able to blossom because when we were actually developing it, and, and actually bringing it to the forefront, he passed away. That, that, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that that's sometimes that's how things are. But he had that broad perspective of saying, like, this is where we need to go, Hutch. This is what we need to do. We need to start focusing on this. So when I remember when, because I worked on both those artists, Brownside and Kid Frost. And I worked with them. Crazy. You know, intimately, like, basically, like, being involved with them i wasn't just like oh yeah just turn your records in not, I was not in just the giving them a beat them. you were actually yeah, I was there in the studio working with them trying to develop producing. something yeah, yeah actually trying to develop something that you guys would love and you guys could really embrace because he felt like doing that would really say thank you see some people say thank you by saying oh yeah i'm gonna come out and perform for y'all but then some people say thank you by supporting your movement Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he did when he that, that's having a broad perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he was such a great he was the most incredible CEO executive in hip hop. I think he was the most phenomenal dude to do it. And and all he gets credit for is basically being a gangster rapper who died from AIDS mm -hmm. In his vision. A lot of us wouldn't have a career. We probably either be dead, jail, broke, you know, whatever. And, you know, um, doing bullshit still running from the police, probably. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have a billionaire um, in hip hop. You wouldn't have uh, the hip hop movie stars. You wouldn't have that without Eze, e man. Yeah, you know, and that's just up. factual. Yeah. You know, so when you talk about a broad perspective of hip hop, if it funny thing when we talk, some people just talk about West Coast, right? But when you think about what Eze e did, if you really, really think about what he did, he actually changed hip hop totally. There's his focus um, to take reality rap to that next level you know what i mean at the time when they did fuck the police at the time when they did boys in the hood it took reality rap to another level because everybody started emulating it you know everybody started imitating it or, or being influenced by it so mm -hmm. that was the more that that's when we talking about an executive and we talking about hip-hop not lasting that long when you look at what he did it actually extended it and made even people from other cities rap that way about where they're from yeah. Also of other genres, I remember like metal cats were bumping that Boys in the Hood. Absolutely, back in yeah. The day. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Was, I like yeah. spoke to everybody. There's cut, yeah. We had, uh, I mean, this was years ago, man, but we had Yella here one time. Oh, uh, dope. Uh, he's been here DJ a couple Yella. of times, but man, I mean, we got to get him back. Shout but, out DJ Yella. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, we had him here one time and I was telling him about, I went to them, one of them, uh, when the show when when shit was pretty rowdy out there man right. you know? and they they had that one show with a, a rotating stage celebrity 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 They're, theater see, I know, everybody remember i can't yeah. never remember celebrity the name theater. of that spot yeah in anaheim yeah and yep. i went the to anaheim that celebrity and i remember going and it uh, we i forgot what night we there was some crazy stuff going on it was a lot of gang it stuff was at always because everybody used to stand against that wall yeah all the way around all the different gangs remember yeah, yeah. they used to be on the wall <laughs> yeah, all the way yeah. around it like yeah hey you lucky hey let <laughs> hey, you hey, hey, hey the celebrity was hey that was gladiator school <laughs> that's, that's, me, I'm glad, that's yeah. gladiator school I'm, celebrity is a gladiator school i remember going to that and uh, i fuck i don't remember what grade i was in but um 
But yeah, bro, and I, and I was telling um, uh, Yella about this show, mm-hmm. and um, this is uh, like I'm literally seeing like, and I never seen that. I didn't know that everybody else liked the music too. So right. I'm like literally seeing these two dudes that look like cowboys. Right, like, right. Mm-hmm. Almost straight out, almost with a cowboy off the, hat. Off, yeah, straight out, right in front, and they're they're in front of us in this show, and and, and they're dancing like, bro, <laughs> bro, singing the words to the songs, but yeah. like so into it. And I was like, damn, this is fucking great, it's bro. Crazy. Like I thought it, was, you know, I thought we just listened to it, and that it's it's. I thought it was great that it was everywhere. I never seen that shit before. Right. I seen these two dudes that look like cowboys. Dancing to N.W.A. and singing all the words, bro, and it was fucking a trip. Hey, you see, you see what hip hop do, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. See what gangster rap do, huh? Yeah, traveled mm-hmm. overseas too, like all the mm-hmm. other countries that be saying it's all crazy. the crazy. Ice T was at that show, that one, mm-hmm. the one I'm talking yeah, about Ice-T. too. Ice T and N.W.A. Um, but I wanted to say uh, props to you, bro. Um, you know, for for all the years of work and everything, and being the most featured artist like ever. You know, we we talked about this before, but I've been hearing collabs, and, and we've talked, run down the list, like, and I like this joint, and I like this joint, but um, you got to work with a lot of people, my brother, over the years, and um, sprinkling your flavor on their tracks, and, and, and I know a lot of the times these artists specifically, like, know what they want to hear, they, they, they don't, I need cocaine on this track, um, yeah. and, and um, something to say about the longevity as well um but man bro so many features man um what are you estimated at have, 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 do we have a total count at this point i stop counting yeah <laughs> it's probably th- like in the th- just, it might be just, a- you know sometimes sometimes when you say say uh the amount of songs you've been through you know i just like to keep it humble yeah hey, you man. know what i'm saying because booze be like yeah you know, who you think he is? Well, not, not who I think I am. It's just if I if I did the work, I did the work. Oh yeah. And so yeah. basically, you know, to put it in the most humble aspect, I stopped counting. And um, I, I wanted to say, um, and we'll bring up some of my favorites in a second. But um, you you originally um, were were you guys signed around the same time? Because I know it was like late '80s, early '90s. Because I know. Um, your original uh, joint dropped right at the beginning, 91 or 1990. 90, okay. Yeah, we signed in 89. And then, um, Cocaine, you had a, a, a before the um, a Funk Upon a Rhyme. Yeah, you, who am I? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah, bro. And that one, was that the end of the 80s or was that? That's a 90. 90 91. also. 91. Okay. 1991. So, so were you guys... Um, Kind of signed around the same time at well, that. I bought him the roofless. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't know how that worked. See, I wanted to yeah. know as a, back in the day. I just used to listen to the music and well, stuff. I, I well, want to hear. Law, we were signed to roofless. Um, okay, and um, when I got you know in the door, doing my thing, um, I wanted to as a producer. I wanted to do something different, fresh and new. But I wanted to do it with my cousin, so I um. Me along with um, Layla um, and Easy, we did a three-song demo on him, and then we showed it to Easy, and Easy loved it. That's dope. And then we took flight, and then that was the birth of cocaine. The fucked up part about that was Epic Records, because at the time we had to deal with Epic Records, it was Above the Law, Cocaine, and Poor Broken Lonely, but it was actually two unnamed groups. I bought Cocaine, and then Doc Dre bought. Poor Broken Lonely, and then we we filled the slots with them too. But the fucked up part about Coca was they didn't want to use his name back then because the FCC regulations and all that. Mm-hmm. They didn't care how it was spelled. They didn't want that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they came up with the concept of, you know, name him a mystery, like who am I? Like a question mark or whatever. Mm-hmm. But still featuring him. And um, But, you know, it's in the stores. They wanted to be who am I? You know, the dope part about it is that he was so instrumental in everything we were doing moving forward because at that time we started working on Black Mafia Life and NWA started working on Niggas for Life and we wanted him to start doing a bunch of the features and hooks and writing and all of that stuff and that's how Cocaine, the birth of Cocaine, I mean, the, you know, the incredible legendary hook person that he is in his own right, which, you know, he's a rapper, he's a singer. He's a dancer. He's a, <laughs> you know what I'm no, but he's a, you know he was like lightning in a bottle when he came to the label, and that's what me and 
that's what we all loved. <laughs> that's what we all loved about him. You know what I mean? Like that. He was like, you know, he's like, you know, lightning. You know, we well, just put him in a bottle. I, I wanted and to the, to, to mention that part though. Is like, man, dog, the style. Mm -hmm. um, well, especially I mean, from the uh, funk upon a rhyme point. Yeah. Um, the 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 way he, he co uh, cocaine could just shift. You know, be rapping. Well, the Who Am I, the Who Am I record was the same. It just he wasn't called Cocaine, so uh -huh. you kind of only know it in Funk. But but the first record was the same. I mean, he still sung. He did a lot of the reggae stuff, uh -huh. a lot of the raspy Clinton type feel, um, and all that. And because that's what we that he, how he is now is how he always was. That's the most incredible thing. That's why they be saying like, you know, you got to change it up. You got to change it up. But then you have people that's calling him that's twenty one years old, want him to be on his record. Want yeah. to be on their records, and he's just doing what he did in in ninety eighty nine. He's but doing the same thing. That style know? is so. is is so <laughs> universal to mm -hmm. any uh, track, right. though, because mm -hmm. to go from to be able to go from uh, rapping and then harmonize and then Absolutely. go into some uh, crazy hook with layers on right. it and shit right. like right. that. That's crazy to yeah. me, and I've, I've always it, it worked. Style. It worked. Kudos. It was it was the best for us when I was creating as a producer creating G Funk. Uh -huh. That was the best for me because. I could actually use him and KMG in a way that other people couldn't use because they weren't only rappers. Like we all like have like we can harmonize together and all that in the music, but we harmonize in a certain way. It's like we all have these individual like tones we're in, and when we combine them, that's what makes the goons, which is G funk singers on it. And then he just comes over the top with the crazy ah, yeah, you know, yeah. over the top, and that kind of made that that was the signature, that became the signature of Above the Law in that era which birthed G Funk. So, yeah, so that, that his 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 formula became I, I think with Coca and, and Adam with me and Cam G became that formula and made us do that turn. And, you know. Instead of having in hip -hop. To, to like maybe like producers might have to go sample a harmony, you could have it just we, laid we'll just out go live. and do it. We'll yeah. just go do it. With the we'll, different tones you guys Yeah, can. we would pick we would pick certain veins that we want to be in mm -hmm. and if he uh, hit it. We'll just harmonize with him. If K will hit the deep, me and Coco will come on top of him, and that's what created that sound that people know as the the real authentic G funk sound is actually like people think it's the talk box or rapping a zap. It's not. It's really those when you're doing it that way. When you have those type of harmonies off on the way we did it, and you put the high pitch sounds, um, synth sounds on it with dark bass lines and crazy singing on top of the shit. That's really what the, the, the basis of all the other stuff, because we use talk box and funk claps and all that. A lot of people who say that that's G-Funk, that's just one aspect of it. Yeah. Like the producers that do it from that aspect, that's only one part of it. It's an element. It's like saying it's the, it's the appetizer to it, and then we were the full meal of it. You know, the chronic has, the chronic has, it's G-Funk influenced. You know what I mean? It's not the full-blown version of g-funk you know and that shout out to dr drake because dr drake put us in the game and and we're highly we love the fact that everybody coins the chronic as a g-funk album i was just you know, gonna well, say that so. that's that's where uh you know maybe a casual fan might think that's where it came from right exactly originally absolutely whatever, but, but but real taste makers will people that know yeah. where it actually came from it came from the black mafia life album which was like the birth of uh, you know his the who am i album Black Mark for Life album, Uncle Sam's Curse, well, Funk Up on a Rhyme, there which Funk Up on a Rhyme is, is the blueprints of Uncle Sam's Curse. And then that formed into what everybody knows, Man, the whole body. Of, I didn't know. And, and see, yeah. what, what I wanted to say is why, why oh, okay, so between uh, Living Like Hustlers and, and uh, Black Mafia Life, right. um, why do you uh, coin the difference of the, well, so the sounds. I mean, you can hear it in the albums, but I, I just want to hear it from you. Because because um, it's more like um, 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 Living Like Hustlers is more like a boom bap funky record. Okay. You know what I mean? It's produced by it's produced by me, but it's assisted by me and, and Dr. Dre. But I bought the when I bought the record in, it was eighty five percent done. Okay. You know, the difference became is that Coke was not on Living Like Hustlers. It's just me and KMG. The writing on it is just me, Cam G, DJ Chaos, and Go Mac, okay. and Layla and Dr. Dre. You know, um, it's more kind of like if NWA was like a like a real funky sound. Dre always used to say like, "Y'all just more funky. Y'all just more like that funk shit." Like kind of like when we doing Living Like Hustle, but it's more like 
hip hop because you know you coming out of the late '80s, you know. So when when we integrated cocaine in the the formula, that's when it took a turn because then we could right. put singing on it. We could put all these different melodies and all this. And my vision was to put put it all into one thing, like a gumbo. We saw we said it's like a gumbo now. It's not just like a boom, a bap, and a rap because that's what we had with living like hustlers. It was just funky. It wasn't like a gumbo, like, okay, I'm going to throw these in there. I'm going to throw this little bit in there. I'm going to throw some rice in there. I'm going to throw some, some crabs in there. I'm gonna throw, you know, it was like that. You know, when Coca came and that, that, that was a, we were able to turn the sound. And it's dope because we were able to be a little bit different than everybody that was doing rap then mm -hmm. when we integrated that into it. Sonically, as a producer, the turn was me to slow everything down, make it look like California music because we were kind of, just a uh, uh, history lesson. We all of us were kind of straddling the fence from East Coast to West Coast, East Coast to West Coast. When I created the sound to do it that way, it made it signature a West Coast sound. It gave it a signature for us. Above the law, we wanted to have that signature, and it came from when me, Cam G, rest in peace, and Cocaine came together vocally, and you know, along with the writing, the writing staff that we had with Gomac. DJ Chaos and Law to do Black Mafia Life, and then that's the birth of it, and that's when it turned. And then we did Funk Up on a Rhyme. That's with a full blown. When you, you he's the full blown version of what really G Funk is. Like that record is like the full blown everything. It's like if it's like almost like Parliament re, reincarnated, any soul singer reincarnated. That's kind of like that record was. We took that to the hip hop fans. Yeah, though, man, that was fucking. Yeah, great. then we took Shit. that and then we turned and did Uncle Sam's Curse, which that same theory end up because it all births from vocally pimping, Black Mafia life, Funk Up on a Rhyme, Uncle Sam's Curse, and that's what created that. That created the whole sound in a complete state because all those elements that I just named to y'all are on Uncle Sam's Curse, it, the talk was, box, the this, the, everything you, is on there. You know, uh, that's literally one of my it's got to be one of my top albums, bro. Uncle Sam's Curse oh, to you. this day. And like you're talking about the California sound, that song yeah. Cali. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's like an anthem for uh, to me, man. West Coast yeah. anthem. Right? That's, that's hard. Like, yeah. We wanted to, to make day. sure yeah. that we were excited. You know, good thing. I think a good thing about me and cocaine, we have never wanted to be nothing but what we doing. And that's do funky music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ain't never wanted to do anything else with doing music. And, mm -hmm. and you know, see, I, I think, uh, you know, as, as hip hop's gotten older and it's not a fad and everybody knows it, there's different sub genres of it and, and, and oh, different yeah. things and you can hear mm -hmm. what you want to hear. But I, I, I do like that, um, uh, you know, uh, mo the majority of the youngsters might be on whatever the new drill, whatever yeah, they call yeah. it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, but the thing is, a lot of them also, because the technology now, yeah. it's easier to go and, and, and do your research. And, I, and I've, yeah. it, luckily, I guess having our platform here too, I've got to see a lot of youngsters that actually do do their research and they, mm -hmm. and they know their shit. And sometimes it might be from an older uncle, right, uh, right. you know, a, a brother, whatever, maybe even their parents, but um, sometimes they just do the research and they, and they really do know their music sometimes. It's pretty cool to me, man. Yeah, that is. Cause I that's mean, a big yeah. uh, uh, ga uh, bridge to get. Yeah, they, they're, they're going to research everything else. Why not research what you into? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, the truth, you know, thing about even architects doing architects at g Funk. you know, our whole thing is not to say, like, we're the only ones that do it to a level of not like anybody else, which we do when we do it. I feel like if our moment <laughs> yeah. is our moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, that's not because he did great records with all a lot of the greats um, from Puffy to Snoop to Dr. Dre to everybody. You know, we've all done. But what we just really want to let the media know and all the fans know that we're the ones who created it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, um, shout out to Warren G, you know, shout out to Dr. Dre, shout out to Snoop. All those people, uh, shout out to Nate Dog. you know what I mean? Everybody who's a part of, like, the whole movement of G-Funk, but we just want the world to know that we're, it came from above the law in cocaine, yeah. you know? So so when we're talking about, like, doing your history, that we're, we're, we're strong <coughs> we're, we're strong with that. We're adamant about that, with, especially with this project. And, and we're not a movement with the new project we got, the new album, the group we have. We're, we're adamant about people knowing the truth from the top to the bottom. That's mm -hmm. right, and and as it should be known, man, and and uh, you know, 
look, before my mama fuck with the county again, I'd rather take <laughs> hey, man, That's we're right. bumping that. Uh, Yesterday uh, was the anniversary of it, too. Yeah, I was going to oh, say that. Man, uh, uh, you know, uh, how long is it? Was 26, it? 26. 26 years, yeah. I'm going to say. 26. You know, at, the, uh, at that time when, when... Or is it 28? Is it 28, 26? 28, 28. Maybe. 28, yeah, you're right. <laughs> when, when Living Like Hustlers <laughs> dropped, I think me and the homies, one of my homies had just got a... Uh, little ride that's 31 years we ago. were out rolling around the streets up to no good and we had i, I mean not to say that's what made us do it. this was just our soundtracks when we used to that's roll 31 years ago, we had li- yeah i'm dating <laughs> yeah i'm dating myself yeah, you, too yeah, you I, tell we, it, we you were tell out yourself there. now we, we look were, good but you we tell were out there, yeah. Dog, yeah, we were on a mission it was that and uh and uh, uh the cmw blue tape oh yeah we blue had tape. we had yeah. them two joints dog banging just back to back that's 31 rolling, years ago bro. Dog. hey bro that those were but you was five yeah no nah. <laughs> 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 hey yeah we're up there, yeah man. yeah I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah we yeah i'm yeah. up there with hip-hop yeah, yeah, man yeah, right <laughs> mm-hmm. hey um so so with the with the new album um how did how did you guys um decide was it just getting in recording doing a bunch of tracks but how did you guys approach it as far as um the content is putting it all together because you're laying it out there man it's the architects of g-funk um what what did you kind of blend to to get this this album going well 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 i mean one thing i think was cool about this record me and him we talked a lot you know we talked a lot about ideals that we want to do before we recorded you know, just like when we was younger, you know, me and him would always dream about doing certain type of styles or certain type of things. And I said, yeah, I said, we want to, if, if, like, he'll call me, he'd be like, he's like, cuz, oh, what if we mix this modern rock shit with it, with this? And I'm like, yeah, but if we do it, let's do it like we're the band covering a record. So that always was the approach. I don't care if he... Because he came to me one time. I think we was, we was talking about doing mahogany, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you think he said, man, that shit's ill. I was like, let me go see. Let me go see if I can flip it and make it seem like we actually went back in and did a Diana Ross record. That's and I went back in, and then he came in. And he was like, wait a minute. That's right. <laughs> right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I put the rap down. He put the vocals down. He did the whole song. He, he did, it's incredible. And and I bring up songs like that because when you're talking about the body of the record of We Have Returned, it's 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 what he did on the record. He really he really flexed his vocals. You know what I mean to to a different level. You know when he wanted to do a record like Mahogany, I was like, at first I was kind of like, it might work. It might be risky. But I was like, it's incredible how we did it. And then when we did like a lot, we did like a couple of modern rock records that I flipped into a soul funk feel. Um, we did a lot of dark funky shit, you know, like Boogeyman and stuff like that, where we changed up the beat like a band and flip flipped a lot of records. You know, we did some stuff like sounds like the Delphonics on it, you know, because we. It, but it sounds like we covered a Delphonics record, like a funk band would cover a Delphonics record, basically. You know what I mean? So the whole theory was like that. That comes from me and him talking for about what six months about doing it. You know what I mean? Then we start going in and doing records. Our first record we done, we done this, the, the, which is a really dope record. We sound it's like a high players feel. It's called Sexy Mama. I saw original. I did everything. I composed everything and played everything myself. All original, no samples. But the cool thing that people are gonna experience in it is, it's really a musical journey. Like it's not all over the place. It's 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 really conducive. It's really it's cohesive all the way through when the, when it's all, when you get it all the body of the music, it's because me and him decided to do it like a old school artist would do, not mailing it in, basically. Mm-hmm. This song, that song, it's like, we would just take breaks and then we would sit down and do blocks of songs. Th- those you know? are the, you know, the, the things that, with, with that just genuine, you know, that organic feel and you guys just, you know, you, and yeah, especially like saying how you guys already talked about it and everything. Yeah. But that's that stuff that, you know, the music remains. Music yeah, it's a is theory, timeless. You know, like like what, what people don't realize I, when I be saying I created G Funk, it's really that I created the theory. Uh-huh. And above the law and cocaine was the people who were the artists who birthed it. You know what I mean? Basically, it's a theory. So when we talking, it's like when me and him talked about the Who Am I album or Fuck Up on the Rhyme. We talked about it. Like he'd be like, "Cuzzo, this is kind of like what I'm thinking about. Can I go here? Can I go there?" 
you know, uh, I think this, I think that. If we go here, we got to do it this way, like that. So I think when we did We Have Returned, it was the same thing of everything that we've done, the whole body of what we did with Above the Law in cocaine, the legacy and all the stuff that we wrote for people and everything. I think that, that helped us a lot because I think what we try to focus on is giving you guys us. We don't try to focus on giving you guys a trend that's popping. So we had to do something that was going to feel like really pop, I mean, not pop in the sense of pop music, but really would pop to y'all and where it would be signature and be something that you could gravitate to at the same time. Yeah. You know, so I think we feel like it. that comes from when creative people come together and actually sit down and do the work. I don't think it's when they pick and choose what's popular or what people think they should be doing. Because me and him never done that on We Have Returned. We never thought about what nobody was thinking but what Cocaine and Co-187 was thinking. We thought in mind of Above the Law and the legacy of Above the Law and Cocaine, but we never thought about what people, the outside noise was. Hey, and that and that's the that that shit that it's like OG oh, shit. Like that's G Funk right there. Right, is, right. Is doing it your way. And not mm -hmm. caring what everybody else is doing right. with all the layers on it and everything <clears throat> like that. Yeah, I wanted to know originally, because back then, you know, anybody, you know, could, I don't want to say anybody. I mean, anybody can, but not do it right. But there's, it's way easier now to record something or, or oh, yeah, oh, put, yeah. put your own rap out or whatever mm -hmm. real yeah. quick on TikTok or, 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 oh, or yeah. IG, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but how, how did it originally start for you guys? back then like who started getting equipment how did you guys do that <laughs> back then because there wasn't I, that much stuff available that back yeah, then either I, you had to get the whole i was shit. i was kind of like the i was appointed to be the music guy <laughs> you know what i mean like like everything you was, were anointed yeah there you go yeah <laughs> um besides like the dj stuff we start getting more into recording i mean in the early days it was it was me dj chaos uh go mac and um DJ, I mean, um, and KMG, rest in peace. Um, they were DJs at the time. So we was only on just mixing and, and doing parties. I was the MC. And then me and um, KMG started being the MCs at our parties and stuff like that when we started doing it like that. As we started getting, because I was in the music, I was always buying drum machines, always buying like little programs and stuff like that. I was deeply into it. You know what I mean? Um, at the time, cocaine, he was just you know, rolling around doing his thing as a youngster, performing and doing his thing. He always had that in him. I was more of the equipment, technical person because that's what I was appointed to do. You know, so I learned everything. I was appointed to learn what, what, every, what the engineer was doing in the studio because we were like, we grew up in the music, in, in, around music recording and stuff like that. So the homies felt like, well, Hutch, you know what's up? You know, it's like the, how to work, run a studio, how to work in there, how to, you know, so I was appointed to do that. Uh, and when I started actually getting really, really heavy, and it probably was like maybe about two years before we came to Ruthless, like uh, about 87, like deep into like having my own equipment, knowing how everything works, knowing how to run a studio. So by the time I got to Ruthless, I was, I knew what was up. I just didn't know how to make it, make records on a professional level, but yeah, but I mean, because back then it was like the 909, it was the Lindrum, it was the 808. It wasn't really a lot of equipment. It wasn't no samplers. The only sample was the SP-12. You know what I mean? Um, and at the time when, when you did do that, it was I'm sure it was much needed because most of the people were coming in were, were artists and stuff and not the music guys. Yeah, they wasn't. Yeah, so yeah, when, yeah. That was an yeah, important Yeah, when we went to the studio, I mean, it was just, I mean, the people that went with us to the studio were just the artists. They're, like I said, they were the rapper. They weren't really trying to, they were like, oh, the music is made. It's like, it's not karaoke, homie. You got to make the music too, you know? So I had to do all of that, you know? It's how I got my chops. You know, it's, it's really how I got my chops by these guys trusting me. I tell them all the time, I'd be like, man, look, y'all didn't have to choose me. They chose me. So it, it ended up being dope for me because I wanted to do it because I loved music. It really wasn't like a, a job ever to me that I was like, damn, like I got to do this shit. I got to be responsible yeah. for this <laughs> because I had to be totally responsible. It's their yeah. lives. I got to be responsible yeah. with everything they're doing. And, and I, I always thank them all the time. Like, man, that thank was you, a man. Good responsibility. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah because it, it made us. It made us have a role. It made us all be responsible. It made us, you know, have to get out there and, you know, play your position at the fullest level. At Ruthless Records, the, the crazy thing about that, 
coming into there, I was glad that I was thrown into the fire because when I got there, I kind of was already seasoned. You know what I mean? I just had never made a professional record, but I was already seasoned because of, you know, being around the homies and they were like, run the studio, do this. You be the one, you know, know what the buttons do and the knobs do, you know? Yeah. We've seen that firsthand with the sound check earlier today, actually. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's thank right. You, thank you, bro. No doubt, yeah. yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. We, we had to take, <laughs> I got no a little bit. We had to, you know. Yeah, we had to learn. Hey, I'd be tripping off Coco because Coco, he'd be, like, he'd be like, yeah, I know how to do that because of you. I'm like, you was paying attention? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Believe it or not. Yeah, I'd, be, yeah. I'd be like, damn, that's dope. Well, and then uh, with, the, with, the, with the layers, you know, uh, cocaine, man, um, the layers that – you bring to harmonies man is, is oh just, my god it's Incredible. just some, yeah it's something so dope and like i was saying earlier like i mean i've told him before but one of my favorite joints ever with 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 him harmonizing is that haters joint with young buck oh god, yeah, yeah that yeah. fucking <laughs> oh my that shit is just so hard that's one of them ones you get zoned out and I'd be thinking I'm cocaine singing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just go, can, can I throw a couple of favorites? Uh, yeah. collab? <laughs> uh, wrong idea is probably one of my favorite songs oh, yeah. of all time. Rest mm -hmm. in peace, badass. Yeah, badass. Badass, oh, man. That was that's a great, right there. Yeah, yeah. Badass. yeah man. and then um, I like that one you did on the East Side as album. Right, right. I think right. it was called Friends, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that was cold. Yeah, I appreciate that. That was tight, man. And then, and then of course the. The one like he he really sprinkled is that like that Snoop Dogg uh what mm -hmm. is it the last meal oh, oh yeah it, uh, that last oh meal. Yeah. Is it that one yeah and yeah. oh my God Stacy Adams and, yeah man and, and yeah, pump man. your breaks those are oh, like yeah. some breaks, of my joints yeah, right there man. but but that was really like that was a Snoop album but that was really like a Snoop and Cocaine album that was like yeah. you guys fucking really meshed on all of them songs yeah, dog incredible. that was some fucking yeah. great shit right oh, there oh that stuff's incredible yeah yeah hey um. Kane, do you know when you're going to someone else's studio, um, kind of like we had to learn from uh, Cole 187 <laughs> today, yeah. even though we've been doing this a while, I'm always ready to learn, but um, do, do you find like sometimes when you're going and recording with other people, you kind of already know what you, what, what layers you need to hear? Because I'm trying to, I've never been to one of your sessions, I'm just trying to take myself through it, but you kind of know what layers you want to do, right? Once you come up with the words and all that for the hook. Yeah, well, you know, you got to uh, read the room. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, energy and the beat always write the song. All right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's not the other way around. Uh -huh. You know, if I hear a beat and build people energy, you know what I mean? It's going to manifest exactly what it's supposed to. Yeah, man. You know? So that's normally how I get down when I get down. Because the, the layers is something like, you know, people that haven't been in studios, you know, just maybe a casual fan or something. Um, some of these hooks that, that people hear sometimes, they don't realize all that's involved. They might be, they might be singing all the, you know, like mm -hmm. a bunch of tracks just to get that one harmony. that Rewrites. That, and all yeah, that well, a lot of that stuff, you know, because, you know, I, I used to sing yeah. and rap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that stuff, to be brutally honest, uh, you know, Hutch would put me up to the challenge and yeah. say, layer it, layer it, yeah. layer it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once he, you know, gave me the prototype of what I need to do as far as giving my own name, I took it from there and just kept that same format. All right, man. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that, you're, you're, that's you're, crazy. The greatest thing I think about him is that he's like a sponge. You know, he gets it. He don't, and It doesn't take him a long time to get it, you know, so... I think when these artists, whatever they want, be it Nipsey, like when he does stuff with Nipsey and stuff like that, he can go in. He kind of knows, like, you know, where he want to go and what's needed. From It's like how I used to teach him, like, think in the beginning with the end in mind. So when he's doing what he's doing, he kind of knows where he want. He's a map. Message. He knows where to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and But he got it. You know what I mean? It wasn't – I never had a hard time with recording him because once I gave it to him, he had it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the most brilliant thing. You got to have artists, you know, when you're doing, when we trying to create, I think when you're trying to develop an artist, you got to have an artist who actually wants to receive it. Mm -hmm. You know, however, even if they're giving you something and you're saying, okay, I think you should do it, boom, 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 and then they actually want to receive it because you never know how far 
they can go if because music is an expression so we never know how far we can go from it just by thinking that okay we took it from here let's go here and that's what i always try to show him and and you know he became he became a phenomenal artist from it you know that's the that's the thing that i like to tell young artists like when sometimes when a guy or a producer comes in he can feel like coca just said something powerful he can feel the room and it's gonna come back it's gonna tell him what to do you know what I mean? That's kind of like we we've, we've always practiced when making music. You know, um, it's important for young artists to understand what he's saying because one day he was a young artist. But you see, as he's saying thirty years later, he still applies the same thing that I gave him thirty years. Ago. Hey, uh, so. uh, like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, feeling the room and and the energy and all that is is. Um, you know why why music is so uh not only universal but uh withstands the test of time and it's you timeless. can go back to something and yeah. and uh you know listen to it like you said come out almost 30 years whatever ago yeah. and, and, that, and that shit is still so hard yeah but then um the way cocaine's also you know the way you're also able to adapt it's still your style but it's like you'll be on some newer artist tracks, and right. it's still kind of their sound. But then it has that coca fucking feel. That's to right, it too. and that's what you and want. And it's still yeah. adapting, dog. It's crazy. That's what you want because exactly. music is not supposed to be a timestamp. Yeah. Me and him talk about it all the time. Yeah. It's not supposed to have a timestamp on it. Actually, corporate corporate puts it put a timestamp on it because that's about like what they you know out with the old, in with the new, so they can play that kind of those politics. You know, what I'm saying? when they play those politics then you know what's going on because there's no there should be no lifespan and especially with urban music it, you notice in urban music they only play that it's yeah. a timestamp on it it's saying like well cocaine can't do a record with a young artist because you can't produce co-27 can't produce a young artist why he does music mm -hmm. an artist is doing music what's the timestamp about oh well that was then this is now Okay, everybody's still wearing clothes and the sun's still coming up <laughs> and we still breathing well, we're still oxygen. Breathing right we still bringing air. So what's different still about the world? Listening to music. Yeah. yeah, we still listen to the music. So what's the difference? You know what I mean? That there, the, I think corporate puts that time stamp on everything. It's not really artists. I don't think a young artist does. It's a it's a funny story. I was I, I came I went to one of my friend's birthday parties, you know, and his whole family came and everything, and it was a bunch of his nephews there, right? And, and the DJ was like, oh, we got 187 ounces, but a lot of... So I'm taking pictures with his uncles, aunties, and all that. And it's cool. So we're our family. So they play Black Superman. When they finished playing the record, they was like, hey, 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 uh, OG, that was that was you? When did that <laughs> record come out? When did that record come out? What, what yeah. day is that dropping? I was when like, 30 now? years <laughs> ago. He was like, that was fire, homie. Yeah, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That was fire. That was turned up, whatever words they use. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, ah, the dude, had, he hadn't to be no more than 22, 23 years old. He could barely be in the club, mm -hmm. for real. And that tripped me out. And that let me know when they hear it, it's new to him. It's not... They didn't say, oh, he was like, when is it coming out? Like, when did, you know, when did this come Unless out? their like, parents were up on it, their parents bumped it. Absolutely. Or, or the, you know, somewhere. Yeah. But that, that's how uh, fresh it is to the ears still, like you said. Right. Out that yeah, that, it, 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 it gives what you said. It has no time stamp. And I, and it, I don't understand at the beginning, um, you know, of, you know, our our musical uh culture here yeah exactly you know yeah. hip-hop but they don't do that on any other musical <clears throat> genre says it all the time. yeah this man says it all the time except hip-hop they want to tell you you know you, this they don't is, tell the rolling stones yeah, no <laughs> they don't age. tell they don't yeah they don't tell them they can't do it no more uh, man yeah. they, and he's still doing yeah. even guns and roses just put an album out they, they didn't say no they just put an album out a few years ago no, they didn't say no mick, mick jagger's no. still busting his unorthodox moves they, bro. <laughs> like, you know, exactly you youtube still youtube doing Still thing. Doing it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just bon that Jovi, for some whatever, reason you know? hip hop gets that that thing. And corporate man, you know yeah. it's corporate, y'all. Yeah. Well, on, and that's I what kind of what we were that. talking about earlier before we even started. Dog, okay, is like, okay, this, let's yeah, say this. Let's just say it, this, bro. man. Let's like, say this. Let's say this. This is why I, I, I do a test on everybody. I say, look, yeah. <laughs> do you what kind of music you still listen to? Uh, one of my favorite genres is still uh, well, uh, besides hip hop, hip -hop obviously. Right? Like, yeah, but no, I, it, I like classic rap. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. But you still listen to hip hop, <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah. You don't you you don't say I don't listen to hip hop no more. Now I listen to jazz. Oh, oh no. You don't I say don't. I don't listen to hip hop no more. Now I listen to funk. I oh, mean, no, uh, I uh, folk listening. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still listen to hip hop, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've been listening to hip hop for thirty some years, you trying to tell me 
you don't want to hear the new people from your era making new music now oh yeah oh, so no, why I does do. so why does corp, <laughs> why do record companies do that then why do they say it's a young game because people that get old usually people that get older that listen to jazz when they 20 they listen to jazz in their 50s right. usually people that listen to a certain type of music they listen to it in, in later in their life they don't change up they don't say i'm 50 now i like jazz <laughs> i they can't listen to this no more right, right? they don't do that yeah. so to me, that 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 showed me that that's corporate that does that. For sure, that's corp. That's a corporate thing. That's not you. You haven't. There's no market research to that. I think no one has no one has tested a group of people saying, "Hey, you're 50 now. What kind of music you listen to? Oh, I listen to jazz now." Yeah. yeah, they haven't done that. So that's the crazy part about our industry is is that they put a time stamp on us and say. You shouldn't rap anymore because you would rap for 30 years. So why don't you just not do it no more? Okay. I, they don't I, do it to Babyface. They don't do it to even, even, it's not only just urban music. It's just hip hop seems like. And I, and I don't understand for Charlie some Wilson reason. Charlie Wilson just made a, put a record out last year. Charlie Wilson for the Gap Band just put a record out last year. Did really good. So yeah. it's just hip hop. No, really. it is just with hip hop. But I, I think, um, and, and then I think sometimes uh, like all these different, I don't know if it's the different genre, corporate, like you said, but it, it's like they don't put the same consideration into how much talent it takes to do what hip hop artists do. And Absolutely. I think, you know, even the, from the production, like Absolutely. you said, and they, they, uh, they, they might pick one song or whatever on what they judge mm -hmm. it by, but these are casual fans, bro. So, yeah. You know, the, the real ones know, man, this takes and a lot of time. we're already a generation into it now. So, you know, I mean, you have, like, people going to shows with their parents and stuff. In a crossover. Yeah, in a crossover. In a crossover part of it is what they're really gravitating to is, like, they're only crediting the crossover stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not crediting the stuff that actually made the, the real fabric of hip-hop. They're not really, you don't get that credit, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like, like he, you know, we got Young Colombiana record coming out, his daughter, um, they're just as in tuned into music as we are. All our kids are just in tune to music as we are. You know what I mean? They're, they're not saying, don't do that. Don't, you know, they, they're like, they champion that era because they're creative people. You know what I mean? They're, cre they're, they're, they're creative, you know? And, and that's why I don't, I don't really knock young people. I knock young people following the narrative that you can be too old to rap it that's yeah, no, no, they no. shouldn't follow that narrative i'm telling you you'll get in a lot of trouble like that and it, and know. it seems like uh you'll miss a whole thing the know. in longevity in any artist and going back to all genres again i feel like it's usually the the, the most like well-rounded ones the ones that kind of have an ear to hearing different things or even coming out with an uh, their own new style at some right, point right um those are the ones that have that longevity it's not the, mm -hmm. the ones that just stick in you yeah know, the, what you're saying the trend that they, they yeah. jump in they jump yeah. on the trend they don't create a trend yeah you lead a young artist that creates a trend is going to hang around for a bit yeah but the ones that jump on the trends they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fade when the trend fades yeah, oh, yeah. hey real talk man we're here with cool 187 mm -hmm. and my man coca right here cocaine hey we we're just talking about djs playing some joints man and yeah. uh when I hear music, hey, you, you he jumps at the <laughs> Hey, the, the bass kick, man. We were talking about the itis. You guys, are, I've been at shows before where I've been so close to the stage, I started fucking feeling my heart pop out of my chest. Hell yeah. Because the, mm -hmm. the, the bass kicking in, uh, that happened to me at, at, I remember two spots off top. One of them, I saw Red Hot Chili Peppers, dog, when, oh, they, okay. when, they, yeah. were not, when they were not super popular right, yet, right, when they were right. still playing colleges and shit it was yeah. actually at a college uh -huh. i seen them and i remember we got close to the stage and i'm fucking shit i had to go outside bro i felt it's like vibration i huh? thought i was having a heart attack or something or when you go to one of those raves i, I don't go to much but <laughs> man man get that i went to a rave man, until get one of Oh, you I went did? to a rave in Tijuana, man. <laughs> Never, man. Listen, yeah, I, I I'm gonna give you. I, I, oh, it, it, and we and we performed at it. You tripped me we, out with hey, that one. one floor. No, no, no. This, this just some crazy really shit. I fuck you up, uh, Like this is crazy shit. I fuck you up. Yeah. Every level was a different type of music. It was in a big ass warehouse in Tijuana. Oh shit. Every level was a different kind of music. You know, it was just dance, different. I don't, every kind of music y'all could think. And then and it had a hip hop floor. We performed on the hip hop floor. But we went through all the floors. 
<laughs> it was the craziest shit in the world, man. What's Talking it? about a rave party. Was it one, yeah, one, one floor that fucked you up yeah. more than oh, different yeah. levels of, of oh, yeah. High oh, yeah. Yeah. the high techno the, or the, or the techno floor. That, yeah, yeah, the dun, house. You know. dun, 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 yeah. Yeah. He might as well yeah. say exactly. that was an uh, ecstasy party. That yeah. was, yeah. Right. yeah. Those yeah. Those I don't know if it was ecstasy back then, but yeah, it was. A little bit of this, a little bit of cocaine, a little bit of ex. Yeah. Each on. level is a different level. You yeah, Ray Parts, you, you got to be careful, it. man. You, you got to be careful. A little bit of heinous. <laughs> I don't think I would go to one right now, but I, because it's so much shit going on with, oh, with all these weird designer drugs and all that oh, shit. Oh, I know, bro. I don't think I would go to one now. Well, that, that's what I'm at. I'm always like, I'm, I got to be one of these cats going like this with my that's drink. What, yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? Because yeah. the fools be like catching you out, like throwing shit in people's drinks and stuff yeah i don't think yeah that's that's the craziness of, about what's going on now and different all the different designer shit see back then it was just like said some pills weed regular shit meth whatever some it was that mushrooms. kind of shit like red mushroom yeah. it's like regular shit like really that motherfuckers fuck with but but now it's all kind of shit that motherfucker make in, in a back yeah. alley yeah you know with, and, it, and you know you don't know I what that shit is, with it, man. man. I, I stick to you know my, my okay beers or barley's and hops and uh, my weed. Yeah, we keep it simple, man. Maybe keep, I haven't keep, done, done shrooms in a while, but yeah, yeah motherfuckers out there writing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was a good one. I gotta, that was a good one. <laughs> hey, what what other spot? I remember one time I got the itis snug. Like, like uh -huh. they caught well the other eye, the one where you're like, oh shit. Right. Uh, we got so hot. I was I got to go to. Um, DJ Pooh studio. Oh yeah, and and, mm -hmm. and uh, they were mixing down. I forgot it was it was the song of uh, uh, Whoop Whoop with Cam. Oh yeah, yeah, Cam. They were doing mm -hmm. his uh, his bad news travels whoop, whoop. fast. Yeah, whoop, whoop. I used mm -hmm. to roll down there with with Grim. Oh Mr. yeah, Grim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember fuck dog the way he had the mixing room, and they, they they always had loud, so we were smoking, and I was like, fuck, I got really really high, and then they kicked that shit in because he was mixing. Yeah, exactly. And that motherfucker, I, dog, I had to walk out, bro. I felt like my heart was popping out of my fucking hey, chest, man. dog. Listen, I'm sure you, your 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 studio is probably like yeah, that. Yeah, man. When yeah. you when, listen, bro. When you when you, that that's something you don't want to do usually. Yeah. You know, because it's gonna be loud. Yeah. Don't yeah. smoke loud if you're gonna be hearing that loud. No, yeah. I, I don't know what I don't know what they do do now, but. We still do it that way. It's yeah. got to be loud. Oh, yeah. You know, it's got to be it loud. We got to know loud. what it's going to sound like when they bump it in an arena. No, but no. I mean, it know, was beautiful, it was but I, I think it was a mix of that. And at the, they had some bomb weed at the time, too. And, and then it, it Probably it was more the in. weed than yeah. the music. Oh, huh? it kicked in. It was probably the weed more than like, the music. Doom. He want to blame it on the music, but it probably was the weed. Especially oh, in no. those days, because the, the st shit started just getting better at that right. time. The weed. <laughs> no, no, it, the, it was good, but it, it was like sonically. No, but I, it's just that I had never, you know, I guess maybe been that close to the. Oh, yeah, yeah, They yeah. had some big, big oh, yeah. speakers in that joint, and they they were mixing down, and they kicked that motherfucker. They kicked the bass all the way up, and they had the double walls and everything going Absolutely. all the way around. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, cement right? it. So, yeah, yeah. You, all yeah. that shit. The drop ceiling. So, like, you literally walk floors, out, you cement, can barely hear it. Walls, but when yeah. you, I was in there, and I was, like, literally, boom, fuck, I was like, shit, let me take a quick break. <laughs> <laughs> away from here. Huh? Yeah, away from here. Yeah. Hey, hey um, so uh, the new album, mm -hmm. we, we, we talked about it as yeah. far as uh, production-wise, what you guys mm -hmm. were feeling and all that. Yeah. Uh, how many joints uh, you guys 14. got? 14. 14. Uh, and they're actually so 14 songs. This is a full album. Yeah, man. it's 14 songs. It's, it's, well, uh, not intros and interludes. And no, it, I mean the interludes songs. and the intros are songs. They're songs. They're songs. They're right? nice. Yeah, they're songs. Okay. Yeah. Sure. It's only one interlude. It, it, um, it's only one interlude, and that's G-Funk uh, G Uncut. And the intro is uh, Mother Earth. And um, that's how we do it, you know. That that's it. We wanted to make a record, like as if we were a funk band. So we wanted to make like we jammed all the way through the album, you know. No no breakdowns. No songs break down where you might feel like it's it's interludish or whatever. But it, that's the way we plan to do it, like a jam session. And you guys you know? are a funk band. You're a hip hop's yeah. funk band. Yeah, bro. That funk shit's soul hip hop band. Fuck, so, yeah, that's, that's yeah. And we travel with a band too. Eventually, when we do our full tour. We travel with a band, you know. Well, I was gonna say like the reception so far I know has been good because you guys been getting out there doing some gigs and shit yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, we right? track, we doing the track runs right yeah. now, but I mean it's funky like how we do it. Uh -huh. It's funky the way we do it. Are man. you guys gonna be doing any music vi uh, videos? To, uh, for well, yeah. the one's almost dropping. Man. Yeah, we're dropping yeah, the, the boogeyman. We just we, we the boogeyman. Yeah, we, that's we right. We about to drop the boogeyman. Um, 
And um, then we have another uh, G Cut Unfuck uh, Unfunk. G Cut. G Funk Uncut. Uh, you know what I mean? Because I want to make it say it right. Yeah. Um, that's dropping because that's kind of the trailer to our album, but it's our, it's our anthem. We, me and Coco call it our anthem. So um, that drops too. But that's just to set the tone up for the album. And um, that's what we got so far. So you'll get a lot of visuals on us. You know, and we have a we have a little secret for all of our, you know, all of our viewers and everything. We have what we're doing, and it's gonna drop in the midst of the album. It's called the sessions, and you'll see it's jam sessions with us and our band. You know, it's like oh, the rest cool. of the songs on our album that we're not gonna shoot videos on. It's like eight joints, but there's jam sessions. Oh. That's so fucking gonna be badass, Ill, bro. So you guys gonna have fun. I think the best thing that me and him done with the architects we gave it enough room to have different fillers in music instead of just being like oh yes it's a hip-hop album so because we planned it all the way out how we it took us years to plan it so when we do stuff like our videos are, are they're super like abstract but really dope hardcore you know what i mean and and saying like like the boogeyman is the way it's filmed You'll see it when it comes. You've seen well, the clips. Well, I've of been it. seeing the clips. Yeah, and the clips and, are yeah. ill. You know, we wanted to. And then uh, when you see G Funk uncut, that's like a different type of video. But we wanted to do that to give people an experience in the, like the G Funk sound and the visuals. You know, we didn't just want to like do a regular. We in the hood, barbecue chicken. That's great. It's cool. But I think that us as recording artists, now we have to give people more of a broad perspective of what the art is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like to say like, oh, I see that out my window. Take me somewhere when I check y'all shit out. You know what I mean? I want to go somewhere. If you smoking, drinking, kicking, and you looking at what we're doing, you're like, okay, those dudes are trying to take us on an experience. Well, you know, well, they're not just trying to say, oh, look out your window and there, there's the dudes in your neighborhood doing what we're doing. We don't, we, we want it with ALGF, it's an experience, you know? I, I think, too, um, you know, to move along with, uh, with the technology and everything, right, I right. think uh people you know they they gravitate towards the visuals a lot too right, so absolutely. it is a it is a powerful tool you know going yeah, forward yeah, yeah. and it, it gives them a sense of exactly what you're saying and seeing what you got you know what what, what you're feeling with yeah, the, music the and art stuff. and the art and yeah. everything when we're bringing art to the music i think that's better than just like mm -hmm. being just like every other rapper or every singer that's making videos it's like that's, oh I'm, I'm from the hood but okay me and him decided we make a hood records. We want to be on the sound stage. You know, we want to do a big produced video. We want to be in the middle of the desert shooting a video. We want to be on top of a building shooting a video, that kind of thing. We didn't just want to be like in the neighborhood. We've done those already. Like yeah, what, yeah. what next level can about we take? A Raven this? TJ. <laughs> <laughs> a Raven TJ right. video right there. Yeah, With exactly. Different, a Raven different TJ. levels of music. <laughs> Yeah, we <laughs> call them. Right you know, I've been I've been quiet because I'm over here enjoying my buzz, right? <laughs> Eight ball no, tipping. No more barbecue chicken eating video. <laughs> there you go. That shit. That's whack, what nigga. <laughs> and he's right though. Because anybody can do it. I mean, I mean, let's be real. We talking about art here, so he's real, dog. He, I mean, every he real, dog. Like I, you know, I get it, homie. Like like you know, like, like it's mad easy. When we first started making videos, it was like a hundred thousand dollars to shoot a video. Like $50,000 was like a cheap video dog. Now cats can have cameras and be creative, man. Come on, yeah, homie. Like yeah. everybody got to start stepping their shit up, homie. Yeah, I ain't yeah. trying to check nobody. I'm just trying to say it look good, but y'all need to start stepping your shit up, homie. You know what? You know? you know what's cool too, though, is about uh, artistry too, is it? It also bridges the gap with 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 the art itself because mm -hmm. I know I know a lot of artists that are, that have met e either like a producer or a video guy mm -hmm, right. and he's like he knows their shit and and bro they're on a whole they got some whole other concepts in their head man, shit is you crazy, put that together and then like hey bro there's so much work we could all do together man yeah I mean, hip hop really does and uh, I like how you uh, you were talking about earlier bringing back the um, the thing about listening to an album all the way through and yeah. letting, letting it tell the story because Absolutely. it's like almost like reading a book or something mm -hmm. because nowadays everybody just puts singles, singles. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, but I like the way. Like, and I think, know. homie, I think, I think that's, that's the way they control the narrative. I think when you're able to take an artist and really listen to the whole body of their, their work, I think that's when you really truly get an experience with the artist and, and, and get to interact with them. I don't think a single is enough to 
actually for you to actually know the essence of an artist. I just don't. I think it's that's why trends work better. If y'all if we if we research the history of it, that's why most of the people who didn't have this great success like the greats in hip-hop they only had singles but think about it it's because they were tapping in on what was the, like the dance craze or what was the popular saying once that dance went out and the phrase went out they went away mm -hmm. but the artists that talk about stuff walking down the street and loving his mama or hating that bitch or yeah. loving on his girl or or uh, my, the homie played me or i miss my homie those people last forever yeah you Be, see in their yeah. whole journey yeah. and you see the body of them you are able to experience the body of them because someone that's doing records from that perspective you want to know more about them once the, once that hip guy with the dance song goes away you don't really care the dance is over like shots 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 yeah, yeah. what happened to those guys <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> they're probably taking a shot somewhere yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, no, but how, I or shooting at somebody <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask because you we were talking about it you know before we even started is mm -hmm. like that's another thing you say in the corporate dictates is kind absolutely. of absolutely the narrative yeah. you don't see like you you mentioned you don't see artists big artists like uh you Beyonce, mentioned Beyonce yeah. or mm -hmm. something they yeah. don't pressure her to just do singles and she won't do no, it anyways because she right. has yeah. the power now but yeah to, when they to, roll it out yeah. when they roll it out right fam when they roll it out they don't say we want you to buy Beyonce single. They say we want you to buy her album, so you get to experience her body of work. You know what I mean? That's why all these artists that are on that upper level, it's never it's never promoted like that. Yeah, it's never it's never being fed to them like that. For us, like oh, it's a singles industry. It's always been a singles industry because you always needed a single in order for people to actually purchase your album. Mm -hmm. It's never been an album industry. It's always been a single industry as far as them marketing the project. You know what I mean? The product never comes out as the album. Nobody says, hey, the album's out today. It's always the single to build up, maybe two or three singles before it drops. But it's to lead you to an album so you can get to the body of work of the artist. The whole if that's the case, work. if that's the case with any anybody, when you sign an artist, most labels sign artists to do albums. They don't sign them to do singles. Those are test runs. Once that single does good, what do they want? An album from you. Yes. You know, they don't want you to keep making singles. So I think that's the hustle that, that big companies use on the smaller companies to keep keep you away from, like, their level of thinking. Like, me and Coco, we think like Sony. We know there's got to be singles. There's got to be certain visuals. Then there has to be an album to drop because we know in order to build AOGF, we got to have people get into the body of AOGF. We can't have them just get into singles because it, it'll be like when cats do mixtapes, they do mixtape after mixtape, then they become a mixtape artist, yeah. you know? And then, and then what happens when they, when they do put a, that body of work out and then they're like, Oh, I like how you sounded on the mixtape, but, but that, there you go. The, that wasn't the body mm -hmm. of work. Which they yeah. should have just worked yeah. on putting a exactly. album out, exactly. should have putting all the energy into the mixtape circuit. I feel like you know? that, uh, that got real hype for a while i feel like it's going back i feel like it's going back to me too i, I think so i yeah. think so too I, I think because now people understand that in order for you to build a career in this a you career. gotta have a Thank body you. of work yeah. i think i think that's real now i think that's real i think it was before because i think when when you, when it changed to like a lot of downloading like a lot of like People want to just stream. Yeah, because you could. That was that phase, that streaming phase. Now people are like, man, I want to get into this artist. There's so much stuff to. So if you don't make yourself kind of different and rare, yeah. where people can get into what you're doing, I think you kind of get lost in the sauce now. Okay. You know, it's like social media. Like it's like everything that we do on social media is not special no more because everyone does it. A Joe Blow, whoever does it. That's so they make the people that do art. That's why we don't really practice on doing personal stuff on social media because we want the special thing we want to do on social media is show you our art. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we appreciate the OG. And we always like want to, you know, we want to do key shit yeah. at the same time mm -hmm. because when you work yourself to a certain stature, you know, and you become major on the major league field, it's no reason why you shouldn't come out the major league dugout. That's but right. at the same That's time, right. at the same time, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to the fans, when it comes to any Joe Blow, we ain't got an ass on our shoulders. We talk to anybody. Absolutely. You know yeah. what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's it's a, it's about the culture that is. and educating them on the origins of G-Funk, filling in the gaps, yep. you know, things they may not have known, yep. but now they know because it's the perfect season for that. When 
when we put this project together, we didn't anticipate the COVID virus. Exactly. Yeah, it had been out. It but at the out. same time, it's pros and cons and everything because it allowed the younger generation, which we raised for over three generations, yep. three decades, mm -hmm. to be able to go back to the computer, which was a form of digging in the crates. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's true. Yeah. You're right. So yeah. now a it, 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 it's a trip to see, you know, not just on our era or our generation, but it's more of the youngsters that are coming in between 16 and 35 years old that are really getting curious about this. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's almost like um, binge watching, like we were talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, and I, mm -hmm. and I, and I, I want to get to some of that in a little while, in, mm -hmm. a, in a sec. Right. But it's almost like that, too, especially with that downtime people had. Um, you could really dig deep. People were checking artists like mm -hmm. and different genres and different yeah, stuff they haven't yeah. heard. But yeah, that, yeah, it that helped, was it helped point, people but, find themselves like yeah. how deep they can go and creative. Mm -hmm. But I think that what's really really ill about what we're doing and what the mark we're trying to make because we love the youth and, and you know we with the youth and, and their movement and what they're doing. But I think the greatest thing that we're able to do is we're able to show the youth how dope a sound G-Funk was in the modern time. Instead of them having to go dig in the crates, they can actually see it in real time now yeah. Would we have returned. Yeah, I think right. that's the dopest thing that we wanted to accomplish. We want young people to experience what you experience right yeah. now. Not yeah. 30 years ago, but right now. You know, and what you experience, my man. You know, we, we that's the greatest thing I think me and Coca have accomplished. And we call it a bridge. The bridge, the bridge to sound, the bridge what it was, the bridge, how it is now, and what it is. We call the G-Funk the new era. So you, know? you, you guys are, uh, you know, it's called the architects of G-Funk. Yeah, absolutely. It's letting people know um, what it is. The origin. But, but like you mentioned, the new version of it. So now, mm -hmm. even what happened back then, I wanted to know, like, how do you take, okay, because people are going to feel this shit. And right. then they're gonna, they might take certain bits and pieces Dope. and use it their own way. I mean, how do you take, uh, do you take love imitation that. The, as the best form of flattery? We do. I, we do okay. because I, we. I just wanted to know because you guys been doing it. And yeah, because to do music, I think I think that it's influence. You're going to influence somebody. Thank you. It's music. Thank you. You're going to yes. influence. Yes. So that's something you can't, that's the universe. That's, yes. that's the vibe. That's the energy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not ever going to get away from that no matter what. And if it's strong, me and him feel like this. If it's strong, that means we doing not doing it the right way. That's right. You know, honestly, that means we doing something good. You know, I, I, I just wanted to get to that because some people uh, might always take it as just copying, but you you really are influencing. You're influencing from yeah. back yeah. till still now. We got a time like we got we we have a lifespan here. We yeah. want to leave something. Yeah. So if someone wants to take Classic. the baton, like he always say to me, like man, whoever take the baton, let's just make sure we put it out there so they do it in the right way. That's kind of like what it's all about for us, for everybody knowing the whole truth so they can know every aspect of what G-Funk really is and how it's, it works in its entire form, not just the bits and pieces. That's why you have to be active to show people that. You can't just mm -hmm. keep on doing interviews, talking about it. You got to say, here's the example. Mm -hmm. Now, just like you said, run with it. Yeah. Embrace and, it. And let me, it. Say, let me mm -hmm. say something real quick. Um, it's always cool talk about the branches yeah. of anything that was invented from the root but you mm -hmm. always go to got to go back to the root mm -hmm. and for the all those who pioneered what was created a long time ago from the origins of g-funk we we saying that's a good thing absolutely but our target in this whole scheme of things is really towards the media because when they go up on a perception that's only a lopsided narrative as opposed to the full intent Yep. Of what's going on you only hear half truths yep and we are here to really tell you because at the end of the day you know what i mean people whether you're young or whether you're from the older generation mm -hmm. they really want to hear the uncut truth yeah you know yeah. what i mean it's it's when they hear certain things from over here over there over there over there they say okay all these things is going around and all these claims is going around but it is a true blessing whatever industry you're in, whether you, you know, whatever it is, to understand the fabric where it came from. You know what I'm saying? And that's the most important thing because it ain't no different what, you know, James Brown did, Parliament, 
War, Santana, any yeah. of them did, man. That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's origin. why is it important? It's very important because if you have integrity and respect the past, you're going to understand what the future means. Damn. Yeah. You understand right. what I'm saying? We're getting some gems right here from the homies. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for coming and thank rocking you, with us for reals. Um, the architects of G Funk uh, is coming real soon. The the new uh, the new video is gonna drop. Yeah, the boogeyman will be yeah. dropping in in a, in, a, in a bit. Okay. And uh, where you, where everybody can get the record is um, www.buddyboy. Dot buddy boy music. Music. Dot com. The link is right there on the bio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's super simple. Uh, it's a Westworld Buddy Boy partnership. He's Westworld with OGFashion.com. Oh. We Buddy Boy Entertainment. You know That's what right. I mean? Yep. At the end of the day, we got the cheat codes because we cousins. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and that's the beautiful thing. And I will say this. It's been a beautiful journey. Absolutely. Uh, to see people influenced by, you know, what we created because we didn't set off to say, okay, in an optimistic way or we got a we got a, 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 um, a crystal ball to tell about right. cocaine going to be the most featured artist oh, or yeah. G-Funk going to do this. You yeah, know what I'm exactly. saying? Like all of a sudden, like, nah, we didn't think like that. We were just young, hungry, young, dumb, full of cum, player, <laughs> pimping, yeah, gangster yeah. shit, yeah. doing what we doing, wilding out. Doing that funky but shit. But it's, it, it's at the same time. Not just to come up with an incredible ass project, because the project is incredible, incredible. <laughs> but just to hold that sentimental value. Yeah. Uphold the flag for your yeah. KMGs, rest in peace, your yeah, Easy E's and your Tupacs yeah. and your and your Tokers and your yeah. Danger. Danger. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's right. like that's what architect represent. So All that. When you see us, it's see us. Me. But it's the embodiment of every experience on this journey, homie, yep. which labeled the architects of motherfucking G Funk. -funk. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna uh, real quick before I guess we get into the last segment because um, we were talking about it earlier. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're talking about music, but all right, what else are you guys uh, are into? You know, like when you when you got downtime. Is it, uh, uh, is it movies, books, video games? Shit, it's yeah. all that. It's, shit, you said everything that I'm into. You said everything I'm into. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I jack off. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well, of course, That's another but, choice. I guess. Hey, but <laughs> yeah, but, just fucking but no, I'm, I'm really mean, fucking. With every you. once in a while, you gotta throw one out. Yeah, yeah I mean all that. I mean, I'm in all that. I mean, it, it's it's me. It's probably, um, you know, in I'm in the cars, you know, crazy building cars. Still, I'm into that. You know, oh, shit. Um, yeah, I'm in it. I'm still into that. I don't have a lot of time to do it, yeah. but um, I'm into that. Um, you know, video games is always kind of hard to get to because we're really busy now. Mm -hmm. But movies, for real, because right now, you know, I'm really like into the film thing. So I watch a lot of films and series. Oh and yeah, all that yeah, shit. Cause I'm deep into the film and stuff. You like you to know. see like the whole behind the scenes. Of what's yeah, and it on, makes me be more, it helps yeah. me create it more creative you, sonically as well. Do you, so. do you think besides sonically you would get more into producing visually as well? Yeah, I'm actually producing um, my own series called A Black there Godfather. It is. It's coming out at the end of the year. So it's, right. it's on my own streaming network, MusaTV.net. Nice. Um, you know, and Master Musa Royal, you know, putting that out. So um, it's, 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 um, it's a series. Okay. It's a real scripted series I wrote. Starring me, directed by me, put out by my own company as well. Oh, so okay. I'm deep into the film more than yeah. he's really pulled, got me off the porch with the music stuff really heavy because I'm not a producer that actually produces for like anyone that don't want me. Like him and him and our partner, our young partner Manish, they doing a movie. So I jumped benefit. in the car with them to help them along with the soundtrack and produce that. But that's the only time he I really come off the porch. I'm really more into like doing our stuff with our companies, with his daughter, my kids. And, you know, all our kids are a part of our companies and everything. So I'm more so like trying to see them doing what they do more executive. Yeah. So that's really what I do on a lot of my part. I have three e-commerce companies and I have a streaming network that I'm launching. Oh, so that's, that's cool. really all I'm into. And when it comes to music, I just do it with my cousin. I don't yeah. really, you know, because we're gearing up to do the Above the Law 
the last album on Above the Law too. Oh, me shit. and him and Cam G did like 20 songs oh, along with DJ K. Also, the movie coming yeah. soon. Yeah, and then the docu. We're gonna do the book. Then yeah, the um, yeah. series will come out as well. Above so, the Law, Living, yeah, living Like Hustler series. Thank you. you know, thank shout you out to Lay Law, Go Mac, Lay Law, and Go Mac, yeah, and DJ Total. Chaos. Total thank you chaos. for sharing yeah. that with us. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna do it, um, and that's really you know that's really what we about, man. Just becoming stronger businessmen and. And family men and, and doing it that way, man. That's what we do in our spare time. What's See your genre? Of, what's your genre of film when you're watching films mostly? Me, I'm more. I'm more like horror, drama, horror, and comedy. No. I like, but my main one is probably drama, gangs like the gangster Gangst. stuff. That's uh, what I was just gonna say. I like the gangster. I like the gangster shit, yeah. but I, I, I like thrillers on the same page. I like thrillers and I like. Gangster shit, really. I, I like I, I I gravitate towards the you know the Al Capone type. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the, that like shit, the, man. Real, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a lot of good movies on Hulu. Sci-fi. I'm I'm kind of like I mean? trying to be a little sci-fi a little but bit. My you know, brother's into the well, sci-fi. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like yeah. the Marvel universe. I, like, yeah, I like the, all that shit. Look, look. Well, it's like that because because that was in the comics too. So that's how we come. Comics back in the days. Back in the days. Yeah. That's how we come in. Like like Hutch here. We just did a video, man. Deep in the fucking desert. So yeah. you know, mm -hmm. We went out there. It was like, damn. Motherfucker can get murked out here. Yeah. And we looking <laughs> like mercenaries. Saying? And we looking like <laughs> mercenaries out there. We looking but, crazy. But it, it was well worth it because we're raising the bar. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like after 30 plus years, man, on really being it, so much mystery behind the mystique yeah. and mystery of the originators yeah. and the architects. Mm -hmm. It was, it was cool to do it according to the season. So any visuals that we put out there, you know what I mean? It's on some rock star shit. It, it is, ain't no it no, is, yeah. you know it. You know it's cool, you know because I got a lot of barbecue chicken eating videos. I Me ain't too. tripping. That yeah, shit work. Cool. If, if yeah. it work, it work. Yeah, on the street around the corner, <laughs> like, like don't don't there, don't, don't trip, man. That yeah. shit work. Mm -hmm. But we want to raise the bar. We want to raise our vibration. And right now we are the higher vibration in anything we do. True, you know what I'm That's saying. True. So, uh -huh. and we want to influence. Most importantly, don't you get won't it twisted. Be disappointed. Trust we me. want to influence the next generation or the independent yeah. people out there to, right. to go ahead do and, it and raise the bar. The bar. Like, like I, like don't I be said, afraid. You yeah. guys are gonna, uh, you know, not only influence but uh, you know, uh, people are gonna uh, kind of mold. Maybe a, a twist with their own music yeah. or with some of the yeah. stuff. Because they the action is the best. Guys, the action yeah. is the best. The action is the best thing to build off of. Like the, you know, you can talk all day, but people show us. You know what I mean? Like we're in that kind of world. Although we in this world, like you said earlier, it's like people want to see it. People want to see you do what you're doing. That's showing you. You got to show people the way. Mm -hmm. You can't just keep talking, you know, mm -hmm. and say, I'm an OG, but I, y'all should do it like this. Well, you do it. Show me how to do it. Because yeah. mm -hmm. some people need to need to be showed the way, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and that's the great thing about the Internet. Now, I think people people knock the Internet and the social media, but it's a powerful tool if you're using it the right way. You know, yeah. you can't you can't nail and you can't nail a nail in with a screwdriver, homie. You need yeah. a hammer. Yeah, so right. you use yeah. the tool the right way, dog. Like we have to use it. Me and him just figured out how to use the tool the, the right way, fam. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and we, people, what well, we found out, mm -hmm. it's like it's good. You know, God put us here to elevate first. That's right. That's yeah. right. But it's good to to hear the streets. Yeah, like, man, yeah. I'm Long so away glad y'all two yep. together. Long oh, away because that's mm -hmm. just the different sound y'all bring <laughs> beside the other beautiful sound they got in their music yeah. collection yeah not like we're not here to diss nobody shit on nobody yeah the record is we cool, just here to tell our truth the cool thing about the album is that it's not anti anything but what is anti is not doing it the right way yeah you know right. what i mean that's what is you know what i mean well, <laughs> it's right, not like, yeah it ain't like put to nobody <laughs> and towards nobody it's for y'all to have that experience <laughs> And the new people that have never heard it. <laughs> well, all right, you know? y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we still, we we still, you know, on that same thing. And we, you know, shout out to all the youngsters that's really shout out. Yeah. taken to this architecture G Funk, -funk sound I, because I'm, I'm glad, that's what it's all about. I, I'm glad you guys uh, um, appreciate the the fact that people do really they they do uh, want to emulate some of the stuff you do, or they do want to learn from you guys yeah. and all that stuff and that. That's real cool because we're gonna have a lot of visuals, a lot of 
new music coming out. Make Absolutely. sure you guys tap in. Hey, uh, speaking And they of, get the Boogeyman right now. So oh, that... Uh, Boogeyman you can get right now everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's available on all available digital all sites. Get the yeah. song. 125 yeah. digital stores. And, man. Yeah. It's not hard and to get. maybe it's, by the time this drops, it might... The visual might be out as well. So That's what I'm talking about. Oh, we'll drop that on the B-side like show, show for sure. That's right. Simone. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, uh, I wanted to ask, oh, visual-wise, though, we were talking about, okay, uh, binge-watching. Um, you were mentioning. Oh, now, yeah, we're watching I, Wu-Tang we're Clan right now. Wu-Tang, right? Yeah, yeah. Man, that motherfucker hard. Wu-Tang yeah, Clan? Catch up. See, that, I, that that's series is hard. Catch up, you watch Snowfall, yeah. too. Snowfall. And yeah. Snowfall. Yeah. Those yeah. are the two I got to catch up on. Yeah, you got to catch up on. I, but, I only yeah. but I love that, man. It's like, you know, to see where hip-hop BMF came. BMF is dope, too. So that's, You know what I mean? To see where hip-hop came. And watching the Wu Tang Clan, right? You know, mm-hmm. they pivot came when they was listening to the West Coast. They was in some of those scenes. They were seeing oh, yeah, them yeah. West Coast niggas kill them yeah. West Coast dudes <laughs> killing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So they y'all should feel proud, man, because when they you look at it, to the West, they gave it up to the West. When I you, came front. When they you did. think about the West, yeah. they gave it up to like that. Hey, culturally. Yeah, I'm talking about you go to New York, you go to it. everywhere on the planet. Man, they are just like B.C. and that shit's Chicanos. I mean, that I, that era is straight like up. that. You know, you know. I, like look, at, I was one of the, I was the dude in in our little uh, area mm-hmm. or whatever, right? That that would have the the new raps. So people wouldn't sometimes. I'm not saying like they wouldn't hear it, but I was the one mm-hmm. that I would be bumping something different. They're yeah. like, hey, what's that? Going to the and, store every week to yeah, find the new shit. because I would always yeah. go every week and get the right, new Right, you was being a real, uh, yeah. dude, real so, hip-hop. So I, Wu-Tang was one of the ones, right. and people didn't understand mm-hmm. it over here at first, right, right away, because it was a, a East Coast the version thing, of yeah. mm-hmm. And I was trying yeah. to explain it, but yeah. now they get it. Now but the I'm, music <laughs> always does that. The music yeah. always guides the people to it. It's a, yeah. You don't have to dope sell itself as we say. Thank you. Dope sell itself, homie. You know what I like? Like, that's that's a beautiful thing how we, like, cultures play off each other. And, you know, Mm. this is going to come out the blue. Yeah. You know, one in particular that that I got my eyes on, and he hot Chicano rapper Mm -hmm. to me. He's like the Wu-Tang Clan, N.W.A., Brownside, Mm -hmm. Mother Law. I'm looking at Shad Boy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he, and also yeah. with the, the you know aggressive style. Too. Yeah, 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 because yeah. I really, I really appreciate. You know, we chopped it up. You know what I'm saying, and um, you know he doing his thing. Beside, you know, anybody else that's doing their thing out there. But shout out to Sad Boy Loco. Yeah, that's right. It, and, and I do a lot of stuff with Mr. D and, and the Southland Records. I do a lot of records with them and Kid Frost. So I, I you know, right. I can, yeah. I can, you know, I can tell you on that part, like. Everything is about the paradigm is finna switch again. You know what I mean? When we talking about that movement, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. This next movement is gonna be crazy. Yeah. This next movement we talking about the G Funk, the new era is gonna be crazy. Yeah. Watch. What yeah. I'm telling y'all, that, pay attention because that's free. Hey, Everything you know else gonna cost y'all. I I, I like. I really want to <laughs> say this one more time, man, and uh, thank you guys again for coming. But man, it's it's real important that we also say like. Uh, man, we're out here making moves together. People yeah. breaking bread together, man. Absolutely, the black yeah. and brown. And, Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. Sometimes it gets uh, the wrong. The lines get blurred. Yeah, 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 lines yeah. get blurred. Yeah. Yeah. But but this is this is the way it's been for a long time, bro. Yeah. And that and that's why we all get along and are are comfortable in in rooms together. We do it making moves because this is all of our music, yeah. bro. This is yeah. all of our music. Yeah. This is. A, this is all of our music. This is all yeah. of our music. We got to start understanding that part first. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't be no hip hop without the black and brown. Brown, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you got to remember all the way de- dating back. Oh, even, even on yeah. the east, yeah. 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 Even yeah. on the east coast, yeah. man. Yeah, that's right. You yeah, got yeah. you got to know mm-hmm. this thing. The mm-hmm. reason why it exploded came from the black and brown. So yeah. I got a new thing in my head that just popped up. Mm-hmm. We call BB King, <laughs> brown and black, black and brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> man. Bam. That's right. Hey, I, I'm glad you. Hey, you guys always uh, uh have always repped that, bro. Like brothers like yeah. Cam also. Absolutely. Shout out, Cam. Cam. Shout out to Cam. Like, Shout out to Cam. Like, I'm kicking it. Like with, with homie. Like he's he's been like 
coming and chilling with us for a while at different yeah. spots you yeah, know what absolutely. i mean and, yeah. and, and i like that they always push that line though is yeah like, we do we have to let people know man we that did. we are we out do. here and doing it's not a one-off stuff. because yeah. you know how things start and there's like it becomes a fad or becomes yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. No. Nah, I mean, it's I been mean. my whole career, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I mean. oh, it's yeah, been my whole yeah, career, yeah, and yeah. I've been in it mine for 30 too. plus. So I'm, yeah, yeah, mine I'm too. Yeah. I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I'll tell you something with yeah. us both. Mm-hmm. And it's and a beautiful thing. Because, especially with, like you said, with easy Yeah, yeah exactly. it's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Like, when you look so at my homeboy my right here, Gato in the building, he's 818 getting, Lifestyle, Pacoima. He's getting the He's the out here right smashing now. with us. You know mm, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Yep. And that's what it's about because we don't see. It's like I, I put my skin next to him, and it's like this fool's darker than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So that yep. shit don't matter, man. Yeah, the yeah. gig is up, man. We yeah. together. Yeah. We yeah. smashing, and we're going to keep this shit going, man. Above the Law and Cocaine, the new group that Above the Law's cool 187 yeah. and Cocaine formed a new motherfucking group called the Architects of G Funk. Yeah. And we've been to spread this shit all over the motherfucking streets to where all the Cardinales and the brothers can ride to this shit and six to this shit. And, and that's, that's motherfucking the cause business. Because our, our motto is for the G's and all the riders. Uncut. Hey man, that's and, it. And that's how we be vibing Wait. when you guys performing at the shows, man. Is we're all out there in the crowd together, man. Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah. man, with, mm-hmm. with, with, with our Asian homies, our white homies. Yeah, brown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, straight face. Everybody, everybody's yeah. out there, man. But yeah. hey, uh, thank you guys again for coming through. Thank Architects of G Funk, man. Code yep. One Eighty Seven, cocaine oh, yeah. in the fucking building. You guys better. Uh, tap into that stuff. Oh, that uh, site. What? Well, one more. W W W dot. B U D is in Eric B O Y music M U S I C dot com. Go get that. That's www buddy boy mute dot buddy boy music dot com in your motherfucking mail. It's all coming. It's all coming. And uh, I wanted to just ask one more thing, huh? Big Hutch. Hell yeah. Uh, the, when you guys are doing stuff with the band, when is that coming? Cause oh, the, um, I definitely got to check. Okay. The, the um, well, the tour will be later later on this year, and top of the year. But yeah, w- the session we got a show coming up. Too. Yeah, the session. Oh yeah, yeah. The, we got a show. We be yeah. in um, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, August twenty seventh. Yeah. Yeah. Call the G Funk um, New Era Tour, Arizona. Yeah, the yeah, whiskey with, on with Western. With uh, us and uh, who else? Mitchie, Mitchie Slick. Slick. Yeah, yeah. Mitchie what Slick. up, Mitchie? Shout Slick. out to Mitchie, Mitchie. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah. In the building. Yeah. 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 So right. so yeah, you can you can get um, the the sessions. Um, well, the sessions, sessions will come, come out. out in September. All right. So you'll get that. It's a series that me and him doing this. It's a video concert series basically where you get to see the insides of us. You know, interviews, behind scenes, that kind of stuff. And then you get the sessions of like eight songs that yeah. we recorded. It's dope as fuck. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? You talking about Low Rod? Yeah. Oh, this is a record. I mean, all the Cadillac fools out there, man, going to be like, God, The only man is called a Cadillac music, dog, but it's really man. made for Rolls Royces, Cadillacs, yeah. uh, Range Rovers, yeah. uh, Low Riders, yeah. uh, 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 Harleys, uh, man. Hogs, as we say. Fools it's, is going to be like, damn, oh. host, this shit, oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's, 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 from our carnale. Carnale. All that. Hey man. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey man, that's what I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait, man. Thank you guys again for coming through, thanks man. It's been another rabbit season podcast, man. Shout out to my brother Shay Whitey over yeah, here. Thank you guys. Shay Whitey oh, in the yeah. building. Hey, our, our bro Manlo. Rabbit in the building. Us. And we out of here. Thank you. Peace. Peace Architects, B side. Well, all right. Well, all right. <laughs>